Blender is becoming better and stronger with every day that passes. So today, we're gonna take a look at how Blender is being used in the industry, especially for big projects like big budget movies and AAA video games. Throughout the last 10 years or so, Blender has gotten a massive attention from 3D artists and studios. Part of it is due to longevity, but also the versatility and ease of use. Not to mention the fact that it is open source and free. So many artists today find themselves using Blender when they kick off their 3D art journey. And this usually is carried out in the work market as well. Because many studios nowadays will allow the use of Blender as long as it does not interfere with the production workflow. Even though it is an undisputed fact that Max, Maya, and all the industry giants are still dominating the production pipelines, in the last few years especially, Blender is creeping in slowly but surely in the arsenal of the tools that studios use to work on their big projects. So let's explore how Blender is doing so far in the extremely competitive and constantly evolving 3D market and at the end we'll discuss the future of Blender moving forward and how it can dominate many industries in the near future. But before we continue, let me tell you about Class Creators, which will teach you how to take your 3D and 2D art to the next level. Because you have an opportunity to learn from industry professionals with extensive university teaching experience. Masterclass courses cover full character animation workflows from start to finish for lifelike characters with Autodesk Maya and Unreal Engine. You will also learn the process of how to custom rate characters for all your project's needs. And you can discover how to expand on solid, basic character sculpting methods to produce beautiful and stylized characters. The great thing about Class Creative is the ability to learn at your own pace and your own schedule. So get started today with the link in the description and use our unique code to receive a special 25% discount of the pro subscription. So let's get a few things out of the way first. Blender is not an industry standard yet because there are a few hurdles in the way, but it is a very capable software. For example, if what we are talking about is whether or not Blender can fit in a real movie or a game development pipeline, like when doing modeling, texturing, sculpting, and many other stuff, it can handle different stuff, and it can help artists create and finish all sorts of projects. For instance, the movie Prospect by Ian Hubert, who created all the VFX using Blender, and Next Gen is another great example, because it is a real big budget movie that showed how Blender is a good software for creating animations and all sorts of different effects and spectacles that you expect from a great movie. Because Blender is like a Swiss knife, so artists use it for a multitude of different use cases like motion graphics, commercials, 3D printing, prototyping, CAD design, and even for movie production like the recent Netflix's movie I Lost My Body, which was nominated for an Oscar. The movie was created using the grease pencil in Blender, as well as the 2020 movie Wolf Walkers, which was nominated for the best feature as well. And just recently, we created a video about Barstorm VFX Studio that heavily leverages Blender's capabilities in their work on different TV shows like The Man on the High Castle. But when we talk about industry standards, they are usually talking about the fact that Blender is not being used in big studios like the big budget studios such as the ILMs, the double negatives, and the what of the world. Or the AAA studios like CD Projekt Red, Ubisoft, Bethesda, and so on. For that, we would say that there are a lot of studios that are using Blender like Lucasfilm, Warstone VFX, Nickelodeon, and Unity Studios, just to name a few. Especially when it comes to previs, Blender is becoming the favorite for many concept artists. But generally speaking, indeed, Blender is less used in those environments and pipelines for multiple reasons, but for the most part, is not because of Blender in of itself. For instance, the studios have been making video games and movies since way long before Blender was even a thing, and to switch to a different software and create a new pipeline isn't gonna be the easiest thing or the simplest thing. Also, packages like Max and Maya are integrated within the pipelines of a lot of productions, which have in-house tools developed specifically to work with them. Not to mention the stability and reliability of the software, which is what a $100 million production needs, something that Blender can't really fully support at the moment. Or at least most studios are not ready to give Blender a real shot to test it on a $100 million plus project. But with that out of the way, 
let's see how Blender is actually used. Tom Rosendale mentioned in a Blender conference interview that previous is one area where Blender is beginning to dominate. Indeed, Blender proved to be an invaluable tool for pre-visualization on different projects due to accessibility, ease of use, and extremely versatile tools, because so many artists are choosing to incorporate it in their workflows. In fact, it was used for this purpose even in the early days, I mean in the early 2000s, way before it became as popular and as strong as it is today. Generally speaking, in the last few years, Blender has come a long way, and you can get outstanding results if you know what you're doing. If you want to check some of the amazing projects people worked on, I mean while using Blender, then you can check some of our amazing projects episodes or the numerous Blender forums, like Blender Artist, Blender Nation, or Blender subreddits, to see what people are creating with this amazing tool. For example, in regards of modeling, I don't think that Blender needs to prove anything, because it is more than a capable modeling software. Most artists like it for its fast-paced modeling workflow, modifiers, and of course add-ons. Blender hands down has one of the best add-ons in the industry, especially when it comes to modeling. Factor in the amazing non-destructive modeling workflow and you got yourself a system where you can experiment and iterate between designs quickly and easily. In addition, with the huge improvements that the Blender Foundation put in, especially in the sculpting side of Blender, character modeling has become a more viable option now than ever. Because a lot of artists now prefer using Blender for modeling due to its, uh, that's right, you guessed it, versatility. If you want an example of that, look no further than the Blender Open Movie Project, or some of the games and TV characters that were created using Blender. Environments are also an area where Blender shines in addition to asset creation. For example, for the game Amnesia, The Dark Descent, the devs mentioned that Blender was used to create most of the environments and assets, and we all know what Amnesia was back then. This, in addition to numerous examples like the award-winning Life of Pi, World of Warcraft movie, the 2008 Golden Compass, and the Alien movie First Contact. If you want to know more about Blender in television and VFX, you can watch Sean Kennedy talk about it in the 2017 Blender conference, where he talks in length about his journey and how much he used Blender for all his movie and TV projects since the 90s. It is a great watch and I highly recommend it. For video games, no doubt that Blender plays a massive role in game development, especially when it comes to indie and small studios. But huge studios like EA and Bethesda use Blender in the aforementioned things like concept art, previews, and so on. But to a lesser extent for other things like character creation, sculpting, or animation because industry standard software are being used for the most part. Also, if you weren't aware, Ubisoft is another studio that has been vocal about the use of Blender since day one. And the head of production at Ubisoft Animation Studio said, Blender was for us an obvious choice. Its strong and engaged community, paired up with the vision carried by the Blender Foundation, makes it one of the most creative DCC software on the market. The way I see it is that Blender is gonna keep getting better over the years, and we're gonna see a lot of artists migrating to using it from other industry standard software like Maya, Houdini, and Max, because it is free, it offers a lot of tools, and the community is great. Hopefully over the years, and especially schools, because studios employ people that graduate from schools, this will hopefully push Blender towards becoming an industry standard and used in real big projects on a regular basis, just like Maya, Max, and Houdini. So guys, I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.